Hello, welcome back to Piers Rocks. Today, a two for one, we're going to be exploring how to build a portable embedded application in Rust for the STM32, the Raspberry Pi Pico, and the ESP32, and we're going to be looking at a task-aware watchdog implementation. First, a bit of an introduction. So I have been developing an embedded application for the Pico and the Pico 2 for a little while now. And one of the properties of this application that's built in Embassy is I run a whole bunch of different tasks simultaneously. So I've got two USB tasks, I've got a Wi-Fi task, I've got a status task, and I've got a couple of protocol handling tasks. And I want to use the watchdog capability that's built into the hardware to reboot my application if any of the tasks hangs. Now, microcontrollers do typically provide a watchdog capability. The Pico has one, the STM32 has one, the ESP32 has one, but they are not task aware. So the watchdog in these microprocessors, the way it works is it's essentially just a hardware counter that starts at a particular value and then counts down as the system ticks. When the counter hits zero, the watchdog will restart the microcontroller. What your software needs to do if it doesn't want to be rebooted is feed or pet the watchdog periodically within the countdown timer. And if it does that, it restarts the hardware watchdog counter to the beginning and it starts counting down again. So you can ensure that your device remains alive by feeding the watchdog from within your application code. So as long as your application code does that and continues to run, doesn't block anywhere, then it will prevent the device from rebooting. Now what I want to do is I want the device to reboot if any of my tasks hangs. If any of my tasks hangs, there's a bug and I want to reboot the device to clear that problem. But hardware watchdogs in these devices are not task aware. So within my application, I built a bit of functionality that essentially multiplexes from multiple tasks down to one hardware watchdog. Each task that wants to be policed by the watchdog registers itself with my task watchdog implementation. And then my task watchdog implementation makes sure that it gets fed by each of those tasks within the configured timeout. And if not, it will let the hardware watchdog expire it's typically normally feeding the hardware watchdog so long as all tasks are alive. But if one task stops feeding it, it stops feeding the watchdog and the device will reboot. Now, it occurred to me that this was pretty common functionality that you're going to want in an asynchronous embedded application. And I took a look to see if I could find any implementation of the task watchdog out there. And I really couldn't find anything suitable, particularly not that no stood and no alloc, which you want for an embedded application. So I've broken out that functionality into a generic task watchdog crate. And as part of doing that, I've got implementations for the Pico and the STM32 and the ESP32. So we're going to do two things in this episode. We're going to look at a my task watchdog implementation and how you use it. And then we're going to look at an example that uses my task watchdog that will, the same example will build and run on the Pico, on the STM32, and on the ESP32. And if you're familiar with Embassy and you're wondering why I don't also support the Nordic, the NRF chips, it's not because I have anything against Nordic, it's just that I don't have any Nordic microcontrollers, so I haven't been able to build and test an implementation for those. So let's take a look at a very simple task watchdog implementation to give you an idea of what the API looks like. We have a bit of um, standard preamble in this file, no std, no main. It's very typical for an embedded application in Rust. And then we're using the various objects that we require in this example. We're then creating a static placeholder for the watchdog, the task watchdog that we're going to create. That will give it a static lifetime and allow us to pass it to the different tasks that we create. We're then creating an object for our task IDs. So task watchdog is a generic crate. You can pass whatever objects you like in as your task IDs. You just need to implement the ID trait, which requires these traits, which you can derive if you use a simple object like a, an, an enum. You can see I'm going to have two tasks in this example, main and second. We're then into the main function. And what we do here is we create, get hold of the hardware peripherals. This example just runs on the Raspberry Pi Pico. We create some configuration for our task watchdog. We set the 
hardware watchdog timeout to be five seconds and we tell the task watchdog that it should be checking every one second whether it's been fed by the tasks that are registered with it. We then create the task watchdog here. We pass in the hardware peripheral to that and the configuration. Then we store that task watchdog in the static that we saw earlier. We then register the two tasks that we're going to create with the watchdog. And those are the main task and the second task, and they have different timeouts associated with them, which task watchdog will police. Now, task watchdog won't do anything with that information at this point because it's not been scheduled yet. The next thing we do is we spawn our main task and our second task. We'll look at those in a second. And then finally, we're spawning the watchdog. This is the point at which the task watchdog is actually going to start policing that the tasks are alive. And this is the point as well that it will kick off the hardware watchdog. There's no particular requirement on the order that you do anything here. The task watchdog will only start policing tasks once they've been registered and once it has been spawned itself. So you can register the tasks first, you can register the tasks second, you can register the tasks from within the tasks themselves. You don't need to do it from the main functionality. Just make sure that once you've registered tasks with a watchdog and a watchdog task itself is spawned, that those tasks feed the watchdog. Otherwise, your device is going to reboot. And then we see the task definitions here. So the first thing, your application has to provide a wrapper task for the task watchdog and call the watchdog run function like this. Then in your main task and second task, do whatever you like. I've got a very simple loop here that just feeds the watchdog and then pauses. And you can see we're feeding it here within the main task and we're feeding it here within the second task. That's all this example does. So this example will just keep running. The tasks will be feeding the task watchdog forever. The task watchdog will therefore be feeding the hardware watchdog forever. So this device will never reboot. Right, enough of the theory. Let's take a look at a running example on real hardware. So I've got a Pico hooked up to my debug probe, which I'm going to flash in a second. This is actually a more complex example that we're going to run. It's going to create four different tasks, main, network, sensor, and failing. Register all of those with the task watchdog. They'll all feed the task watchdog for 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, the failing task is going to stop feeding the task watchdog. Then, Five seconds later, which is the configured timeout for the failing task, task watchdog is going to notice that it's been starved by the failing task. That's the point at which it's going to stop feeding the hardware watchdog. That's 20 seconds into the test. And then after another five seconds, which is the configured timeout for the hardware watchdog, the system will reboot. So let's flash it. Now it's running. All of our tasks are created. And we can see that each of the tasks is feeding the watchdog. This will continue for about another five seconds. And then we'll see a log actually from failing task just saying that it stopped feeding the watchdog. There we go. Five seconds later, we'll see task watchdog spot that it's not being fed. So we now see some errors saying failing task has starved the watchdog. Five seconds later, the device reboots. Now we're going to look at the same example running on an STM32. So I will plug that in and I will flash this example. I'm going to flash it with my Debo probe. And we can see the same things are happening. The application has been created. The tasks have been created. They're busy feeding the watchdog after 15 seconds failing task is going to stop feeding the watchdog that's going to happen about now and five seconds later task watchdog will spot that it's no longer being fed by failing task and after 25 seconds the whole device will reboot there we go it's rebooted and finally i have my esp32 connected so let's flash that and the example is running all of the tasks are busy feeding the watchdog. Failing task will stop feeding the watchdog shortly. There we go. And a few seconds later, the task watchdog will stop feeding the hardware watchdog and the device will reboot. There we go. So I promised you a portable embedded application that could run on all of the STM32, Pico, Pico2 and Pico2. 
ESP32. I've just demonstrated that to you. So let's have a look to see how I went about implementing this. This is the embassy.rs example from the task watchdog crate. Again, we can see no stood, no main, very, very typical. Now we see a bunch of use statements that are being switched in and out using cargo feature configurations. So we can see we have STM32, RP2040, which is the Pico, RP2350, the Pico2, and the ESP32. This example can also be run in alloc or no alloc mode, so with dynamic memory allocation or only static compile time memory allocation. It can also be run with deformat logging or without deformat logging. We were looking at examples with no alloc, and on the STM32 and the Pico, we were looking at deformat. On the ESP32, we were looking at no deformat. So we have a whole bunch of those users switched by configuration options. We're also doing a little bit of configuration of the info and the warn macros if we're not using dformat, depending on which platform that we're using. That's really not very interesting for this example. I'm not going to go through in this example the difference between alloc and no alloc. I'm going to concentrate on the no alloc case. Um, in this example, I'm actually setting up a, a, a type for my uh, watchdog task watchdog object. That's just to make it a bit easier to use later on in the code. But you can see I'm creating the same sort of static as I was doing earlier in the earlier example. I'm also creating my task IDs very, very similarly to how I did that before. I just have four tasks instead of two tasks here. And then we're into the main application. Again, I'm going to ignore that Alex specific code. But you can see I have to have custom code for each platform to initialize the hardware. It's a very similar call in each of the three cases, but it is a different call, so it has to be behind a configuration switch. Then on the ESP32 specifically, I also have to initialize a timer peripheral so the embassy timers will work. That's not required in the STM32 or RP2040 case. I'm doing some logging, and then in this example, I didn't show this, but I'm flashing an LED at the start of the test. This is in case you want to run the example without logging. The LED will flash at this point of the test just to let you know that the device has previously rebooted so you can check that everything is working as you expect. And you can see here the slightly different code you need in Embassy to control an output GPIO. So on Pico, you just give it a pin number and the level you want it to start at. On the STM32, you need the pin number, the starting level, and the speed, which I think means drive strength. The drive strength on Pico is um, handled slightly differently. And then on the ESP32, again, we have a slightly different call to create an output GPIO. Then we create the watchdog configuration. This is common across all the different platforms. And then we need a slightly different call to create the task watchdog on each platform. The reason for the different call is you need to pass in a different hardware peripheral. You need watchdog from the Pico, you need IWDG from STM32, and you need to pass in the timer object that we created earlier on the ESP32. From then on in the example, the code is exactly the same between all the different platforms. We've now looked at all of the different platform specific code. And we've created the watchdog, so we store it in our static. And then we register the different tasks. So we're registering main, sensor, and network. In this example, we're actually going to register the failing task with the task watchdog from within the failing task itself. You see I've got different timeouts for each of these tasks. I'm now spawning the watchdog task, spawning the three tasks I've already registered with it, and then finally spawning the watchdog task. And then I've got the tasks themselves in the rest of this example. And the code here is very, very similar to the code that we already looked at. So I won't go through this anymore. But this is my approach to building a, a portable application in Embassy and Rust for three different embedded hardware platforms. So this was a really useful learning experience for me. I'd done quite a lot of programming for the Pico and Pico 2 with Embassy already, but I'd never used Embassy with the STM32 
or the ESP32. In fact, I'd never done any programming on the ESP32 at all. I've done a lot of it on the ESP8266 with the CSDK a few years ago, but never with the ESP32. So it was good to actually use this in anger. The second thing I learned more about were generics and traits in Rust. To be honest, I've been a little bit scared by the concept of generics and the scary angle bracket notation that Rust uses. I'm now becoming more familiar and more comfortable with that concept as part of developing uh, a generic crate with task watchdog. And then the third thing I've learned a ton about is the feature configuration mechanism that Rust provides you in your cargo.toml files. I'm making extensive use of that in task watchdog as you just saw in that example I went through. I hope you also learned something and found this video interesting and useful. If you did, please do stick around. Till next time, rock on. Thank you.